I love, loved my grandparents. They were amazing people. Just poured into us. Our vacations uh, when I was a kid uh, consisted of uh, going out. We, we lived in West Texas, and so we went all the way out to East Texas, which uh, in, you know, like the late 80s and early 90s, I think, I think pretty sure the speed limit was like 55. And uh, so it took like 112 hours to get from West Texas to East Texas. But we'd go out there and hang out at their lake. And my uh, grandparents were just incredibly hospitable. And uh, my grandfather uh, would stay up all night and he'd be cooking all kinds of different stuff. And um, as we got older, we recognized like how special this was. And so my brother and I would, uh, we would sit there with him and learn how he would, and specifically uh, fry catfish because there's maybe nothing better in the world than that. So, uh, and so we just wanted to learn his secrets. And so I could remember year in and year out, like having to come back each year and each summer and to try to get down the secrets of how he did and each step he took. Uh, and then the same thing would happen. We would get together, um, over Thanksgiving, which we're moving into this Thanksgiving season. It's glorious. It's beautiful. It's good. And um, my, the night before Thanksgiving, my grandmother would prepare uh, gumbo. She's from Louisiana, and so she had this amazing gumbo recipe. It'll touch your soul if you ever have a chance to taste it. Because I, uh, what, uh, what we did is we would, I would just watch her, and you have to, if you're familiar with making gumbo, you have to have a roux. All you Southern people, yeah, it's, all you Louisiana people, you, know, you, gotta, you gotta create a roux. It takes a long time. It's like 45 minutes. You're just, it has to go low and slow and you have to take your time and it's very, and you have to look at the consistency and I'm like trying to take all this information in and the more and more and more I would watch and I would try to go home and then replicate because I realized how special this actually was and that I wanted to have, be able to have this even as my grandparents moved on. Of course, they're now both with the Lord, but um, uh, it was so meaningful to receive this like instruction and to be able to have these moments of watching and then being able to want to like imitate and be close to and near and have that same experience and then be able to maybe in some way, shape or form, be able to pass that on uh, because it was so meaningful to me. I don't know, uh, how many of you could think of a parents or maybe grandparents where they imparted something to you and the more that you got to spend time with them that it, it meant something to you and there was something that was special to that or maybe you even had a, a coach who did something for you or called something up in you and it really was meaningful to you, a meaningful experience, something that they imparted to you. There's really beautiful things that we can often have passed down, but it takes some time to spend with some of these people. And, it, and even as much as we have, might even be able to think about and remember this impartation and this gift uh, that we would receive from them and learning their ideas and their ways and their thoughts, as much as we even have that, we can also think about those that we maybe were around who were not kind. And maybe their voice was not a voice of encouragement. And even some of the disappointment or even pain that can come from being around someone who isn't out to give life, but they're often taking from you. And the difficulty and the disappointment that it comes with that. You can't even ever really underestimate the impact that someone can have on you both for the positive, but also sometimes for the negative. And we're so grateful for the ones who imparted these beautiful things because there are things that are fun like uh, recipes, but there's also some really rich things that can be passed on. And Jesus is going to, uh, in this scripture we're about to read, affirm this truth where he's gonna say, I have some really rich powerful, beautiful things to pass on to you. But it's actually not going to be me in the present that's going to pass it on to you. Uh, and I want you to be ready because I'm going to come alongside you, but I'm not going to be physically walking with you. I'm going to send my spirit to be with you. John chapter 16, I want you to look at verse 12. And here's what he's going to say. It's a really powerful moment as Jesus is like pouring. This is his final uh, prep to his disciples before he goes to the cross. And he says, I still have like many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. This is a 
this is a, a, such a powerful statement, meaning Jesus is incredibly thoughtful about how and when his followers will be ready to receive an impartation from his heart, from his mind to them. I think, I, I, I think about this statement. It's like, there are some incredible things that I have to give to you, but you aren't even totally ready to receive it yet. You don't have to fear, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna be able to take care of that, but you aren't ready. As a, a kind of, if you can think, it may be in the voice of Jack Nicholson, but you can't handle the truth, right? So it's like, you, I got truth for you, but you need to hang on. Verse 13, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. And he will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. So here's what Jesus is saying. I am still speaking. God is still speaking, and he wants to lead each one of us into the richest and fullest truth. How is he going to do that? He's going to send his Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit. He's going to take these words of Jesus, words that haven't even been said yet or spoken yet, and yet be able to impart the full measure of the truth of the heart of God. We're at this moment in John 16. Hear this. They don't even fully understand. He's now hours before he's about to be arrested and go to the cross. And they still don't even fully understand that he's about to go to the cross. They haven't fully construed. They've spent three years with him, still haven't fully dialed in yet what's about to take place. They don't understand this upside down kingdom that Jesus is establishing, not for our own greatness, but for his greatness by serving. And what Jesus is saying is, I want you to hear this, I, I am the word. But listen, you will actually know about these words, not because they are coming directly from me, but they're going to come from my spirit who will come to you and he will guide you and he's going to teach you what is true. And he's going to herald this truth to your hearts if you will open and listen. And so the rubber meets the road question is, well, how is the spirit going to do this? How is the spirit going to do this? And the answer is, well, number one, the Holy Spirit of God is the author of the word of God. He's the originator of it. And not only that, but the spirit is going to continue to lead us into that truth each and every day of our lives. Uh, Paul is writing to Timothy uh, his disciple, and he, he says it this way. He's going to say, this word, this scripture, it's breathed out by God. It's profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training and righteousness that the man and the woman of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. What becomes clear from the Bible, hear this, it's not just a book to be learned. It's God's voice to be heard. Let me say that again. The, the word of God, the scripture, is not just lessons on a page to be learned. It is the voice of God to us today. It's present. 
The author of these words is the Spirit of God imparting to us what is beautiful and rich and right and true. Meaning, God is here to communicate to us. This is what Jesus is caring about as he's on his way to the cross and what he's imparting to his followers is to say, I'm going to continue to communicate to you. The way that I will communicate to you is this Holy Spirit, my spirit that I'm going to send and he won't say anything that I wouldn't say. He is perfectly trustworthy and beautiful and true. So listen to him. I will impart these words. All communication, hear this, all communication from God begins and ends with his Holy Spirit. We must like open our heart to this spirit of God who is communicating. It's, hear this, it's more than just words on a page. It is God speaking to us. How do we know when God is speaking? How do we know when it's the Spirit of God and not just ourselves or our own ideas or our own thoughts? Hear this. The Word is very simply how we know what the Spirit sounds like. If you've ever wondered, like, how do I know what the Spirit of God sounds like? The answer is the Word is what He sounds like. The word of God now becomes so critical. If you weren't going like, God, I want to follow you and I want to trust you with my life and I'm I'm struggling maybe to uh, walk with you or maybe my faith is, I wrestle with it day in and day out. Like, how do I become acquainted? Like, how can I walk with you? Or when I fall or when I stumble or when I fail and I'm trapped down in sin or I'm trapped in shame or guilt, like, how do I listen to you? How do I walk out of this place. And what Jesus is saying, you want to know my words? You want to know what the Spirit of God sounds like? It is through the Word. The Word is what the Spirit of God sounds like. It's His words. They're actually His words. The Spirit is saying, you're not going to say anything that Jesus hasn't said or would not say. He's fully in submission in the same way that Jesus Himself was to the Father. And the Spirit is going to continue to speak and reveal truth. And what Jesus has made clear is that he's here to communicate right now today, like here in this moment. Here in 2024, as we sit, as we gather together, Jesus wants to talk to you. He is speaking now right here by his Holy Spirit and his spirit sounds just like the word of God. It'll always sound like the word of God. The foundation for everything that the spirit of God wants to say to you and to me comes right out of his word. In fact, hear this, there's no revelation, there is no insight, there's no dream, there's no prophetic utterance, there's no word of knowledge that is truly from the Holy Spirit that is not deeply and joyfully in submission to and in partnership with the word of God. Now, later in this series, we're going to talk a little bit about how the Spirit does speak to us through insight through uh, vision, through dreams, Uh, all the ways in which the scripture would say that the Holy Spirit is still speaking to us. But what we get first and foremost is that his voice and his heart will never be outside of the beauty of the word of God. So if you're here and going like, I want to be someone who walks with God and listens to the Spirit of God and is directed on a Tuesday afternoon by His Holy Spirit, you want to know what He sounds like, get drenched in the Word of God. That's what He sounds like. Make yourself open to the Word of God, maybe in a way that you never have before. 
and let it wash over you. Jesus describes this familiarity with a, pic, a, a picture. He often speaks in parables and pictures and illustrations. And Jesus gives this rich illustration in John chapter 10. He says, truly I, I'm, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs in by another way, that man's a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the gatekeeper opens and the sheep, hear this, hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them and the sheep follow him. Why? For they know his voice. A stranger, they won't follow, but they'll flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Now, I want you to hear this in no uncertain terms. This is the invitation of true intimacy with the God of the universe. It's an invitation. Because what he's actually saying is, what I'm looking for is a knowing of my voice that is beyond any shadow of a doubt, where you are anchored in what is true and what is of me, where you don't find yourself being tossed to and fro by the waves and the winds of the world around you, but you know my voice, you know my voice. And because of that, you know the voice of the stranger who isn't coming through the front door with an invitation to intimacy, but coming to rob and steal from you. God is so eager to speak to us and he does it through his word. If you want to know what the Holy Spirit sounds like, come listen to the shepherd if you want to know what the Holy Spirit of God sounds like on Wednesday morning, come be with the shepherd. Like sit with him and listen to his words. He's made it known to us through the very Bible you have in your hands. How unbelievable, how incredible that God has done this for us. I don't know if you've ever... Um, read the word before, or you read the Bible, or maybe, um, you know, you, maybe you're on a reading plan, and you're reading something, and you're like, just beyond, like you're buried in Leviticus somewhere, and you're like, I don't know what, okay, uh, you're just trying, just being honest, like, I'm not sure what this means, and I'm going to try not to mix my silks with the cottons. I'm just, you know, you're just like trying to figure it out. Like you're like, okay, God, I just want to follow you, right? But you're not totally sure, right? I don't know if you've ever been there before, but you're in the word and you're trying to get it. Maybe you don't fully understand. Hear this. Listen to me. It's rich and meaningful. Even when you're in those places where you don't understand why, because it's just an opportunity to familiarize your heart with what he sounds like. Even in the moments where you're like, I don't understand, don't worry about it. If you're, you've, if you're in a dry, quote unquote, dry passage, and you're like, I don't know what relevance this has to me, like I'm just trying to remember to pick up Timmy at six o'clock, you know, you're just like in the middle, and I'm like, what relevance is it? Listen to me, don't worry about it. Just be in it to be close to the shepherd. Just get in. It's, it's okay if you don't get it all. It's okay if you aren't like able to expound like Spurgeon, all of the beautiful, great depths of the riches of the word. Just get close to the shepherd and learn what his voice sounds like. Not everything has to be like beautiful, incredible revelation where you're like dancing on the hills and you've got it all figured out. It actually just is, I just want to come close to the shepherd. 
You don't know what the Spirit of God has to say to you? Just get close to the shepherd. So we open the word and just say, I just want to know you. I just want to know what you're like. I want to know what you sound like. Can I just say, I can't imagine this king who rules over the universe, if you were to come to him and say, I just want to know what you sound like, would sit back and say, sorry, kid, you can figure it out for yourself. It actually kind of comes down to what do you believe about the character of this God we serve? Because I think anybody who's willing to say, I'm just going to sit here for, I got five minutes, God, but I just want to familiarize myself with your voice. I just want to listen to your words. I just want to know what you sound like. Where the Spirit of God would not honor this request. It's beautiful to him. It means something to him. And maybe you don't come up with the greatest revelation that day, but hear this. When you are in need of direction and when you are in need of comfort and when you are in need of confidence and when you are in need of hope and when you are in need of peace Tuesday night, he's there. He's there. His voice is there. And when you feel broken up over what's happening in your business or what's going on in your family or what's happening with your children and you're like, I'm, it's the voice of the shepherd is your only hope. The Spirit of God is coming to bring to us the words of Jesus. He was the Word incarnate. His Word in the flesh is preserved beautifully and richly for us through the Scripture so that we know exactly what the Holy Spirit sounds like. He sounds like the shepherd. And this is, by the way, how Jesus lived his own life. This is what's amazing. Jesus actually was the perfect example of what I'm describing to you. He lived it that way. In John chapter 5, he says in verse 19, he said to them, truly, truly, which I love when Jesus says truly, truly. He's like, all right, get this. Truly, truly. Twice. True, true. I say to you, the son can do nothing of his own accord but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, the Son does likewise. For, whatever, uh, for the Father loves the Son and shows him all that he himself is doing. Now, doesn't that sound familiar? What did Jesus say about the Spirit? Spirit won't say anything that I haven't released him to say. This, is the, this Trinity, this Father, Son, and Spirit living in this rich community with each other saying, you don't get anything false from us because the Son does exactly what the Father has called him to and the Spirit is doing exactly what the Son is directing him to and they are this beautiful picture of union, perfectly one, yet three, playing distinct, beautiful roles in our lives so the son waits on the father and the spirit waits on the son. We get to see this incredible thing that's taking place here where we learn how to walk, to go on a walk with this God. That the vehicle for the truth, for Jesus' words, is the spirit of God. And that's important because hear this. Listen. Because the devil does not approach you with a pitchfork and horns. He isn't coming with an ugly, scary Halloween mask. How does the scripture say that the enemy is going to come to you? 2 Corinthians chapter 11. For even Satan disguises himself as a what? Angel of light. Meaning this. It's so rich and important and critical to actually understand the voice of the shepherd because there is one who's masquerading as an angel of light who is going to try to deceive you. Because the truth is, 
people, as I would say all of us, we're desperate for leadership and for direction. Looking for what is spiritual. Humanity's looking for it. Looking for something that is meaningful and rich. I'll be honest with you. It's really only in the last few decades. uh, For the longest time, I'd just say this, that the enemy kind of had the Western world uh, convinced that there really wasn't anything that was unseen. There was no spiritual world or that we kind of only lived in this empirical world in which you can really can only trust what you can see, taste, and touch. But the truth is over the last few decades, that actually has changed in which people are actually desperate for something outside of themselves. We've looked at everything you can see, taste, and touch, and it's, we've found it to be lacking that everybody actually knows there's something more. And you got two voices out there. There's only two. There's a voice of the shepherd and there's a voice of an enemy. And one's coming through the front door inviting you into intimacy and one's coming through a back door to, to steal, kill, and destroy. And so we're, now that we're in this place of actually being willing to receive that which is supernatural, or an impartation of that, of recognizing there is a spirit world right now that is more real than the chair you're sitting in. And this cosmic thing is going on, and there is a, there is a battle over your heart, my heart. And Jesus' own words in Matthew 24 says, there are gonna be false Christs and false prophets, and they will arise, and they'll even do great Signs and wonders so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. What he's saying here is that there's even going to be supernatural movement, impartation, in which we'll look at it and we'll be tempted to go, man, that's amazing. That must be God. And God's saying, "Uh, don't be confused. Know the voice of the shepherd. You want to know, you want to be able to navigate through these days? Listen to the voice of the shepherd. Follow him so that we might discern not just what is real and not real, but what is true and what is false. That our discernment is based regularly by listening to the shepherd or in in other words, by coming to engage God through his word by letting it have its way in our hearts. The beginning of the deepest partnership that you and I can have with the Holy Spirit, it begins by taking in, consuming the word of God. And so how how do we learn to listen to that spirit? Well, we just... We listen to the Spirit by engaging the Word. That's what we do. You want to listen to the Spirit of God? Let's engage the Word. It's living. Scripture of Hebrews says it's living, it's active, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and it's discerning the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. This Word is critical to our lives, is what it's saying. It goes down to the deepest place. And so if you actually want to engage, what does it mean to actually engage the word just for clarity? Well, certainly it means we just, we read and read and read, even on the days where you feel like you get nothing, we just come to it and let it have its way. But I want to say this, but if you really want to really partner with the Holy Spirit, hear this, pray the word, pray it. So we read and we take it in and we let it wash us, let it come over us, We let it shape us and change us and direct us and guide us and lead us to know how the shepherd sounds, to listen to the spirit. But if you want deep partnership, start praying it. Say it. Speak it back to the Father. Some of the best prayers are not the ones that I can concoct with great language. The best prayers are just taking this word and telling it back to God. And I don't know why. It might even seem a little bit simplistic, but something changes 
when we take the word of God and we just declare it in truth to him. And we pray them and we pray the Bible and we pray the Psalms and we pray those apostolic prayers in, that we find in Colossians and Ephesians and Philippians. And usually it's like, uh, you know, uh, Paul will start off by saying, oh, it's, appreciate you guys, I remember you. But then he goes into, here's what I'm praying for you. And I'm just telling you, pray that over yourself and pray that over your kids and pray that over your spouse and pray that over your neighbors and pray that over your friends and every place. Pray it and just see what God will do. It's the language of the Spirit of God. It's his word. And then, and then do this. And, and this is big here because we talk about this all the time. Because I, I honestly, I don't, I don't, I've lost interest uh, in trying to do church where we have uh, church services. And people kind of show up and we can do some music and we can do some messages and we can maybe even do a couple of events. But I'm going to be honest with you, it, it, that feels actually pretty empty to me. And I think it's really important when we gather here together. But listen to me. What I really want to do is be a people where we, we come around each other and are a group of people who love the word of God together. And we're building a family of people who love the word of God and can speak life and encouragement and blessing over each other. If you want to learn how to listen to the spirit of God, you go headlong into the word and then you put yourself around people who also love the word. And I feel inspired by you. And I I love even the conversations I've gotten to have with many of you where God was teaching you and shaping you and it like touches my heart moves me, and your testimony, it, it shapes me. Being others, being around others who love the word of God is a seminal, critical part of what it means to follow God and walk with God. It's why we talk about being in groups is so important. And I'm looking forward to some things that we believe that God's going to be leading us in. And in 2025, we'll be sharing at a later time, but there's, I'm looking forward to just continuing to build a community of people who are like rooted deeply in the word and we're rooted together with each other and ready to take on whatever God would call us to, to see this city touched by the power of God and to see our families and our friends touched and our, our coworkers We're in need of God's word over our lives. So let's be a community that's doing it together. And and let's get up under the teaching. Let's come, let's let's gather together on Sundays, but I'm certainly not the only teacher. This is great. Find biblically faithful pastors and teachers who want to impart truth and give what is good from the word of God to you and let it wash over you and I think these are the, this is the way, this is the beginning of the pathway of you want to you say, I want to walk and I want to know what the spirit sounds like. Open up the word and let the shepherd have his way. Just let him talk. I think that's what would be rich and meaningful for us. I'm going to ask our team to come up. We're going to have an opportunity just to take a moment to listen. It's one thing to preach it. It's another thing for us to actively do it. And uh, on the first Sunday of the month, we have an opportunity to receive the Lord's Supper together. Um, But we're just going to let our hearts be prepared for a moment. And so you can put your stuff down and just take a moment to come before the Lord and to ready our hearts to receive the Lord's Supper. And if you're here and you're a follower of Jesus, you've given your heart to him and asked him to come and make you alive, then you're free to come and take here in just a little bit. There's zero pressure for you to receive the Lord's Supper if you're not sure where you stand with God this morning and you've not actively given him your heart and asked him to come. You don't have to feel any pressure to come receive this, but this is for uh, those who are eager to walk with God, 
to really, truly walk with him. And so he invites us to remember. So let's just start here in this place and invite. Would you just invite the Holy Spirit to come and speak to your heart? So Spirit of God, we are inviting you now to take your word the voice of the shepherd and make it alive. So would you invite the shepherd to speak to your heart? This is my sheep, know my voice. So this is going to give you a little bit of space to invite him to come and just speak to your heart. And the way that we'll do that is, uh, would you just do this first? Would you lay down anything that has kept you distracted or has kept you pressed down with shame or guilt, hurt, condemnation. And would you just offer those as an act of worship to the shepherd? 